area service, a wide area. I love to travel. In fact, I've worked almost every state in the United States over the years. But uh, my health is not good anymore, so I'm cutting down some of those places. But anyway, my idea, saw these in Walmart one night. I've used them before. Little paintbrushes. There's other uses for these paintbrushes. All kinds of colors, too. 98 cents, I think, for this pack full of paintbrushes. Okay, let's see. One thing I did for this bring with me is super glue. You need to glue it in. But anyway, this makes a really good. I don't want to fit in this one, bro. That's why you have to always buy bumpers. But uh, the ones that will fit in, these things make a good, they're tapered. And, uh, Twist that thing in there like this, and they're real tight. I always put a little drop of super glue on it to, uh, to start off with. Uh, you never make it stay in there better. But you can cut it in two. These are not what you need to be cutting with, but it's just, uh, let's see right there. And then, I normally take a wood burning tool and melt inside here. A lot of people use lighters and they smoke up things up or those little torches. I use a little wood, electric wood burning tool and melt the bumper under here. But that makes a really nice bumper. And you know, like I say, all kinds of colors and they're tapered. So, and that's the good part about these is uh, if you've got one of these threaded where the hole is threaded, you can twist that thing down in there and it will Make its own threads into this and make it last better, hold it in there better. So, I'm going to cut this. I don't have my pocket knife, so I can't make that look quite as good. But anyway, you clean it off here inside. But it makes a really good plastic ring. I mean, it's not anything really highly scientific, but it <laughs> works. I like that. Yeah. It works. also known as the Scissor Chick. I am out of North Dallas. It's my third jam. Bonnie trained me three jams ago. Okay, yeah. So my idea is um, you got your whetstone, and I always get a big puddle going around my whetstone uh, when I'm sharpening on it, or when I'm, you know, using it. So I have one of these rubbery mats. This is actually for hot tools, like hairstylists put there flat iron or their hot tools on it and I just cut it to size. So I put it down first and then I put a microfiber towel on top of it because the microfiber towel is still kind of grippy and then I put the stone on top of that and it still holds well, it doesn't slide around. And so when I'm spraying or pouring, pouring water on there, <laughs> um, I don't get this big puddle around it, it's all getting soaked up by the towel. Good luck. Jay did not think of that. Denise Marie, living in Newport Beach, Florida. I've been sharpening what okay. Bonnie has taught me. I've worked for them at hair shows, and Barbara is a stylist as well. So, um, I've been working on this since 1998. I'm mobile. I keep my stuff in a husky tool bag on wheels, so I'm limited in space. I have little spray bottles for my alcohol and water. They're really little. They're airplane compliant. They have a little clear cap that goes on them. So when I want to take my tools out, the little clear cap goes on the assignment, and the the nut and the washer and everything, all the guts from inside the shear go in that little clear cap upside down on my machine and I spray the alcohol in there. Then I take a mascara brush that you can buy in Sally and a pack of 10 or probably a couple bucks. It has a swirly, a tapered, tiny little brush that I also insert into the holes in the blades, 
clean it out. When I pull it out, sometimes I find an additional washer stuck to it that I didn't even see. So as I'm sharpening, I got all those things in there, I'm, then I'm not looking for where did I put the washers and the spring and everything. They're right there every time. When I'm getting ready to put this uh, shear back together, spray maybe even a little bit more alcohol in there and scrub around in there with that little tiny brush. I don't know if guys get what a mascara brush looks like, <laughs> but it's tiny and it's tapered, so it goes into the hole in the scissor blade. And uh, that's how I find the parts I didn't know were gonna be in there because they're so dirty inside that hole. I clean the hole with it as well. And that's just my hot little ticket right there. Okay, please vote for me. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I'm out a little bit. Yeah, my hand went up and do a good job. Yeah, I'm not doing a lot of cotton ball. But then it down, if there's any snags, it's going to catch that cotton ball, but these are no good. I didn't think they would be. See, they're, they're showing that cut that time. But uh, if there's anything bad on this year, that cotton ball will show it to you. And uh, it's good for all shears, really, as far as your hair cutting and all, but you still want to use real hair on the hair cutting shears. But as an extra test, especially on the tips, it'll let you know if that tip's going to snap or not. I love Jim's idea. I test my shears on tissue. And I, at first I had the tissue box, which we all know is big, but it's very, it's not very sturdy. So I found these at Target, and they're very sturdy. They have to go in your car cup holder. Um, and I take all the tissues out first, and I separate them all, and <coughs> fold them into little squares, and then stick them all back in there. So each time I pull one out, it's already separated. It's already one ply, and I can just use it. And then I can also just fold it back up, stick it back in the top. So. And it fits, it's you know pretty small, so it fits inside my bag. Hey, my name is Joseph. I'm with Slyback Cheers here out of Atlanta. Um, my idea is, is I keep a bucket of scrubs in my car, so when I'm done mobile sharpening and stuff, I can pull one out, wash my hands, and it's really clean and everything. Um, I found these when I was in high school doing printing work in the printing press, and it was the only stuff that would get ink off, the concentrated ink that you use in printing, and uh, it works really good with doing the shears and stuff like that, so you have clean hands. So I just keep a bucket in my car, and off I go. <laughs> so. where, where can you get those? Um, you can get them off Amazon, it's like $10. Uh, I got these from Granger, it was like $15 from there, so. How many in a bucket? Uh, this bucket has 72. What's the brand? Uh, bucket of scrubs. Or scrubs in a bucket. <coughs> scrubs in a bucket. You want me to pass it around? Well, what we found with clipper repair and with the masters, especially the older masters, is their power screw is working its way out. Those of you that have messed with it know that the power screw has adhesive on it. It's got a little piece of glue on it. What well, we found that with some of these older masters, even a new screw will work its way out fairly quickly when it's turned on and vibrate out. So what we've done is take the thread tape and make the screw just a little bit thicker and get it in there and get it set and it holds perfectly. Uh, we've done it for several barbers because that was their favorite pair of clippers. And uh, it works great. We have had no complaints. It holds up to the heat that the master generates. So just a little trick we use to, to keep that power screw from coming out. Hi, I'm Rick Brown with Premier Sharpening here in the Atlanta area. My wife and I, uh, we're mobile. We have a uh, van that we're set up in and we do everything on site. Uh, two things that come to play when your mobile service is power consumption and space. Uh, how big of things can I get in there? How, how small can I keep my equipment? And how much power do I have to have? Because that power inverter will only uh, supply so much power to your situation. Uh, one of the things that, that you need is a, an air compressor, a way of blowing the hair away from if you're opening up a clipper blade or a clipper to, uh, to clean it whether it's a master that you take the weight off and it's always just packed full of hair. So I found this little device. I was actually watching Larry the Barber Man on, uh, on site, online, and uh, he had this little gizmo. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll get it. Uh, if I take. come back up. And uh, I, was, I was impressed. When, it, when I opened it up and plugged it in, uh, it really moves some air and it'll move the hair and stuff out of there. And uh, has proven to be a... Uh, Oh, a nice little tool. Uses very little power. And, uh, it's called, uh, what was it, X? It's, it's, the purchase or the name of it is by X 
the letter X power, A-2 Aeropro multi-use electric computer duster dryer and air pump blower, and it's blue. It comes in three colors, but that's that's a nice one too. Speak as loud as you can, Ron. I know. Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you all hear me back there? Okay. Hey, all right. That's the first. <coughs> okay, I'm Ron Dewitt. I'm out of. Uh, Wake Forest, North Carolina, the city, not the university, and not the street. Okay, uh, we're about 20 miles north of Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, I do shears and clippers, I'm mobile, and I do them in the salon. So everything that I have, I have to pack up and uh, unpack, and pack up and unpack. So my friend, the cable uh, organizer, okay, I just put it on the cord, wrap it up, throw it in the toolbox, and I'm ready to go. Also, while I'm in the salon, rather than having my spaghetti cord go all over, I can unwrap what I need, wrap up what I'm not using, and I'm still very neat inside the salon because a lot of the sharpening I do is at an empty station or a station that is that empty at that point in time. That's it. Okay. For those of us that are mobile or um, working with shears, uh, I've found sometimes that when the bumper is missing, um, one of the things you know, when you're dealing with all different kinds of scissors, um, not, and you may have, uh, I don't know, you're kind of down to your last few bumpers um, that you're gonna use. Um, those bumpers may or may not fit into the hole that's existing. Um, so what I have in my van, and you, everyone probably might have one, is it's very well worth to have a, uh, a little Dremel kit. Along with the Dremel, you've also got uh, some drill bits, things you can ream out that hole, to uh, make the hole of the uh, bumper a bit bigger, because uh, a lot of times, depending upon what's, you know, you just, in other words, it's all about time. Time, you know, how long, how's it gonna, how long is it gonna take you to get your scissor finished to be able to get it back into the person's hand? Time is money, so um, having a little tool such as that, um, I found is quick, speedy, and easy to use. Um, and so, anyway. So, so have a have a Dremel. Making sure you're you're using Dremel and you're making the hole bigger in the shear. Correct. You're not doing anything to the bumper. No, no. So, I'm, okay. So, um, generally, what I personally what I stick with is the elongated bumpers. You know, the replacement parts. That's what I kind of go with. Um, I I use the twice as sharp with the uh, diamond wheels. Um, the reason why I like to have the longer bumper is because depending. So you're not. It's kind of like a twofer. You're actually reaming out the hole, but at the same time, you, you can take your bumper and you can, you have a little bit to work with, you can go up against the, the, um, the wheel slightly and kind of shave it down and taper it in so that you're not, just it makes the process quicker. But the, the main thing is with the uh, having uh, a Dremel because a Dremel can do a lot of different things. It's a quick, easy hand tool and, um, and uh, can, can fix some things, you know, in a relatively short period of time. So, uh, is there a particular size drill bit you use, or? Um, I usually use the smallest drill bit, like you know that is. You know, a lot of times, what I'll, with, as far as the drill is concerned, it's it's not so much for drilling through. It's just I use it to ream and expand the expand the hole, um, which is not what a drill bit's meant to do, but it works. So yeah. Um, so the drill bit's actually smaller in the hole. You just kind of correct, go in yeah. there and kind of. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. I'm not I'm not looking to re-drill the hole. Um, you could redrill the hole if you really wanted to, but then you have, you're talking about putting it into a vice. Yeah, that's what, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, but this no, is just, no, just to make it big enough to get it, uh, to get your bumper in there and call it done and get back to the customer. Oh, it's about your baby. I had a baby. Oh, my wife had a baby. <laughs> it's been seven weeks ago. Um, so that's exciting and new in my life. And now I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, a quick trick, there's a new clipper that Andis came out with probably about two years ago called the Pulse ZR. 
um, and for barbers it's the Super ZR. And uh, something we've run into a little bit with this that we've had some issues with, there's three different parts that make up this housing. It has a lower housing, and then a top housing, and then kind of a cover that goes over the top housing. Um, and between all those housings, hair gets in between them all just like any other clipper. Um, but with this clipper, the way the switch works is it's a little contact that's in the off position, and when you slide up this actuator, it moves it to the on position. Over time, especially in um, a lot of your white barber shops that have looser hair that can fall down in there, sometimes um, like groomer, groomers, the fur, it doesn't quite get all the way down in there. Um, but uh, a lot of times that hair will fall in there, keeping that switch on all the time. Um, and eventually what will happen is their battery will die, they put it on the charger, it doesn't charge because the switch is on. Um, and so it's a quick, it's kind of a pain because it's three, three pieces of the housing to get it all taken apart and cleaned out. Um, but I've seen that several, several times uh, with this new clipper. All in all, it's been a great clipper, um, but that's kind of just a, a little bit of a different uh, issue we've run into um, than we run into with most clippers, so something to keep an eye out for. Those of you that don't know Lee, he's a second generation sharpener. His dad, um, Fred Mueller, I trained him back, what, 12 years ago? Yes, ma'am. And um, he passed away this year, and Lee's taking up the reins. And some of you may have remembered his dad, um, Fred, but he oh, was I a. Did. Yeah. Did yeah. So. Appreciate that. So I'm, I'm relatively green uh, with the uh, shear sharpening business. Uh, my name is Lee Mueller, and I own Top Shelf Shears, and I'm a distributor for Benico, proudly uh, working with uh, Gene and Bonnie. Um, I'm a bit of an uh, obsessive compulsive uh, on, on some things, and I have a little bit of a cheesy idea, and this has been helpful to me, but I'm mobile, and um, I keep anywhere between a small to a medium little trash can in the passenger side of my vehicle. And that's because, you know, you, you eat when you can. You can't really leave the job until however many shears you have to sharpen are sharpened. And uh, just having that convenience of having a little trash can for meals from breakfast or from lunch or from whenever, because that stuff can pile up. I'm one of those kind of guys that uh, I don't like my car looking trashy and messy. I got plenty of friends that I'm having to move stuff all, this, all over the floorboard just, you know, to get a ride home. And it's like a, I don't know, it's just a thing with me. So I know it's a little bit of a cheesy idea, but the convenience of having a little small waste basket to throw your trash in, not only keep your uh, vehicle, you know, clean, but make it more accessible to get your equipment in and out. Thank you. My idea is that there's a beauty shop who is adjacent to an antique store. So I sharpen shears for her. And I went to the next door to the antique shop and was looking around, just grazing, and I found this. This is a ceramic home. Okay. For two dollars. I'll let Joseph take a picture of it for me. That's a. Is can that we pass that around? around? Yes, absolutely. Antique. So, antique home. shopping is my idea. Antique yard sale, whatever. Hey there, Bill Pierce with Wolf Industries. You've probably heard of who I work for. You probably don't know me as well. Um, I deal mainly with industrial side. And uh, how many of you are so swamped you don't need any more business? Anybody here like that? Okay. <laughs> well, you, no matter what. you may be that way and that's great. This idea is not for you. I actually have two ideas that kind of blend in together. One is if you do need work, remember, when this wheel and these wheels are turning, you're not making money. You're making money when the flat one is turning or when the, the grinder's turning. When you're at your strip mall and you're at the beauty shop, stop and take a look around. I travel for a living. I do this all the time between visits. Take a look around and see who's there. Yes, industrial scissors. Sometimes we step back, we say, oh, we don't make enough on those. But the time investment is a lot less as well. You can go to a dry cleaner in the same strip mall next to your beauty shop, pick up five scissors at $10 each. Um, your total investment in time is about 15 minutes, and you can make about 50 bucks. 
okay? Give or take the pricing, that's a whole other subject. Um, don't sell that short. Uh, my other thing that kind of combines with this is, look to fire a customer. <gasps> what did you just say, Bill? Yeah, there's good money and there's bad money. Find that bad money on your route and fire them. Make the business decision. Take the time you would invest in them and find better money. That person that is way outlying out here, that when you figure in all your costs, you're breaking even or it may even cost you money to deal with them. Sometimes firing is a have a heart to heart with them and say, you know what, I'm coming 43 miles out to your place and you're the only person out here and I'm, I'm losing. And firing is to stop the way things were being done and bring them back on at a different price with a different agreement, something like that. But clear out that dead weight on your route. Fill it back in with better money, easier money from the business standpoint. And if you're looking for things, don't sell short if you industrial scissors. Let's face it, it's about making money. You know, yeah, getting some old, you know, uh, industrial shears from a tailor shop or an upholstery shop, there's no glamour in it. But the green is still there. So those are my ideas. Those are good. Um, so one of the things that I've uh, I found a another use for uh, nylon tape or uh, plumber's tape um, mm -hmm. out in the field. Uh, sometimes you're you're faced with um, a, uh, a scissor uh, th uh, screw um, that uh, needs some. Um, you know, it's it's usually found on an older older, older shear where you know it's my favorite pair of scissors that I've had since 1932 when I started uh, the beauty industry kind of scissor. And, um, and when I hear that, I'm going, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I wonder what I'm gonna find with this pair of scissors. And of course, my goal is, as someone that wants, is a service to the service industry, I wanna um, do my best to try to return a, a working pair of scissors that they'll be happy with. Um, and so sometimes I'll find a, uh, a, a screw that has been, the thread has been worn, the pivot point is worn, um, worn out, and uh, what I'll do is I'll take that uh, that Teflon tape or that plumber's tape um, that they use to wrap around the threads for plumbing, and I'll take it and I'll literally take the screw, and, if, and usually it's a screw that's not a split screw. If it's a split screw, I'll sit there and I'll tap it out and kind of make it, make it uh, expand. Um, it's those screws that don't ex have no expansion, and I'm not going to sit there and try to cut it with a Dremel wheel <laughs> to create a split screw, which would be crazy. Um, but I, what I found was that uh, using that plumber's tape, I'm able to go around, you know, maybe maybe once or once and a half, um, and uh, actually screw it back in, and it, it will hold it, it will keep it. But then I'll also explain to the customer, listen, I, I've got your scissors working, and I'll make sure they can do their cut test and they're happy. Um, and, I, and I'll let them know I can appreciate that this is the scissors you had forever, um, but please know that you need to start looking for another pair of scissors because a lot of times, um, you know, that's just a, a fix that's only going to work for so long. So um, filling the void, and it also I've used that as well as on the finger rest, uh, the removable finger rest. Uh, I find a lot of times um, using super glue will work, but only for a certain period of time. So I've filled the void with um, using it around the finger rest screw as well, creating um, you know some uh, some firmness so it doesn't just keep loosening up and aggravate them. So uh, that's my idea today. Okay. So good morning. Uh, my name is Josh Davis. Uh, my wife Lindsay and I own Clipper Pros in Buford which for those of you that have been to the training in Snellville, we're about you know, 30 minutes away from Bonica Shears. Um, we've only been sharpening clipper blades since November, so I really don't have any good ideas for clipper blades, so any of y'all have, let me have them. <laughs> um, but we're opening a storefront on Main Street in Buford. Uh, we're completely set up, we're just waiting on the city of Buford to give us our license. One of the things we're trying to do is become more relevant to the barbers, stylists, and groomers in our area than Sally, Cosmoprof, 
or um, Salon Century, Salon Century. Um, or even Amazon. And so we don't ask, can this be done? We ask, how can this be done? And so one of the ways we've come up with to make ourselves more relevant to these individuals is a jobs board. And if you can project a picture up there. Yeah. So in the store, we have a physical jobs board where you can come in and post your jobs that are available in your salons or barbershops or groomers. In Georgia, there's a high number of barbers. There's a low number of licensed barbers. Everybody's having trouble finding licensed barbers and stylists. We also have an online jobs board, which is $20 a month. But when we open this up for the first month, then all it is is it says barbers, stylists, and groomers, and job board above it. So you come into the store, it's free. You post online your jobs, it'll cost you $20 a month. We're not out mobile like a lot of you are. A lot of you, if you have a simple website, can set up an online jobs board. And as you're going from place to place sharpening, if you see empty chairs, if you know that uh, Josh's barbershop is under new management and he's lost all his barbers, but you're hearing of, of barbers over here that are looking for jobs, you can be the person in the middle. You have now become extra relevant to your clients because you are now the person that they can come to if they're looking for stylists, if they're looking for barbers, if they're looking for groomers to work in their shop. So our suggestion, our idea is if you have a, a physical location, maybe a physical board, which brings them in to your shop, which might help them buy some stuff from you. Or if you're mobile, even just a simple online jobs board where you can go, hey, $20 a month, you can post your openings, and I have students that I teach at the schools, local cosmetology schools, that are looking for jobs. And they'll go to my website looking for jobs, and they'll see your post. That's our just becoming more relevant than Sally or Cosmoprof or Salon Centric or whatever uh, you have in your area. And, and more relevant than the other sharpeners. We have a lot of sharpeners running around Buford right now. And so if we can add an extra step, something extra that they don't add, maybe they'll come to us and see us. So that's our idea. Okay, good.